Hello, hello, and welcome to my second video of the Tutti Frutti Scrapbooking Workshop Kit. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to cut the papers so that you can actually make up the scrapbooking kit. Once I've cut them and popped them into their um, individual packs, I'm going to stop the video and then I'll probably do the construction of the pages on another day because the sun is shining outside and I would like to get outside and enjoy some of that vitamin D. I've decided that I'm not going to do it all in one big video because that way at least if you did want to follow along it's easier to break and um, just see different things otherwise this might be a very very long video. It can take a while to put these scrapbooking workshop kits together so again that's just another reason why I decided to break this into different videos. If you haven't seen the first video I did a walkthrough of everything that's in the kit I'm not going to be covering that again this time. So all I've done is I've gone and got my trimmer. I have two blades on this trimmer. How awesome is that? Uh, I'm going to take one of them off. I'm actually going to take this one off and put it back on and take this one off and put it aside. The reason I'm taking this one off is because I know that that one was a little bit blunt which is why I got this one. Um, so I've got a nice sharp blade on my trimmer and that's really important. The thing I love about Fiskars is you can buy replaceable blades. I was a little bit worried because they did um, or we did stop selling the blade and score. So this is a scoring um, attachment. We stopped selling them but good news they're coming back. So I've got my trimmer and I've got a pair of scissors just in case I mess up a little bit. I'm popping the uh, little tutti frutti shapes aside. I've got everything that I had in the last video plus I've also grabbed some memory protectors. So if you bought a pack of the tutti frutti scrapbooking workshop kit with memory protectors just grab out three of these. You don't need memory protectors necessarily for this part but I like to shove my pieces into that as I'm going. You could always use the Ziploc bags but I like mine in memory protectors that way I can put it straight into an album. Really important that you do have the instructions. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, if for, for whatever reason you want a larger version of the instructions, just download them from the website, do a search on Tutti Frutti Scrapbooking Workshop Kit or G1255 and that will give you the instructions. So to complete this kit, it says that you need, now just a note, it's really important that you read everything because I haven't in the past and I've mucked up. So <laughs> to complete this workshop, you need the 2D Fruity Scrapbooking Workshop Kit. I've got that. You do need a black journaling pen. I won't, won't need that at the moment. 3D foam tape. I'm not sticking anything. Don't need that. A paper trimmer. Got it. Scissors. I've got adhesive. I'm not sticking anything. Don't need that. A pencil and a ruler. I'm going to show you one way of um, cutting and then I will tell you my way of cutting. Okay, I do it different to other people. Turn the page, gather photos. Again, you don't need to gather the photos because we get these awesome photo placeholders here. So project one, it tells you the photos you need. Project two, project three also tells you if it's portrait or landscape. And again, you just can pop these on your pages. So I will be using these in my, um, when I'm cutting, I'll be popping some of them into my packs. Getting started, gather all materials needed, done. Trim all zip strips and set aside. So that is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to pop my sticker sheet aside. I don't want to pull that apart at all. And what I will do is just lift all of this paper up and move it off to the side so that I can trim these. Um, it's funny recording myself because normally I sit here and when I'm doing this I talk to myself. I'm still talking to myself but I'm actually recording. Well I'm going live which is even weirder but I figure that if I go live then it's recorded directly to um, Facebook easier for me to download rather than recording it onto my phone and then I have to upload to YouTube or Facebook or whatever and that takes forever with my internet. 
One of the things I love about this trimmer is the wire blade, which allows me to see exactly where my blade, sorry, the wire, the wire, it allows me to see exactly where my blade is cutting. So that was the back and the front of this paper and the zip strip is identical. So that's the zip strip. In case you didn't know what a zip strip was, sorry. Okay, the zip strip is the top bit of the paper. So this is 12 inches by 12 inches and this is half an inch and it's the zip strip. It's got information on it like the name of the paper pack that you are working with. So this one's Tutti Free. It's got a code on it if you want to reorder any of the paper. For instance, if I muck up and I need to reorder, which will be totally embarrassing being live. It also tells you what was in this pack. So there were six sheets of 12 by 12 or 305 millimeter by 305 millimeter and the featured colors because close to my heart match their colors. So we, our cardstock, our ink, they all match with the patterns in the paper, which I love. I love. Do you love it? Give me a love heart if you love the fact that close to my heart colors all matchy match. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to run out of things to say. I might even, if I end up editing this video, I might edit it for YouTube and put it up without me speaking all the time. <sighs> I, I didn't particularly like these papers when I first saw them. But what I've learnt with scrapbooking is when you see, oh, when they bring out new papers, grab it. Because what happens is if you don't grab it and then they run out of stock, you'll see somebody create something that will make you want it. Um, the other thing I love about workshop kits is even if I'm yeah, not really sure about the workshop kit, you can change it, you can alter it. There was one that had pumpkins or something in it. Um, I don't want pumpkins. Not at the moment anyway. Maybe when I move out to my farm and I'm growing pumpkins, I might want pumpkins, but not at the moment. Okay, that's done. Six sheets of pattern paper. I've cut the zip strips off. They are done ski. Now, the next lot is, it says, um, check the cut orientation below each cutting guide image. This will show you how to cut the paper, keeping the patterns on your project pieces facing the right direction. I'm going to show you what I do. Just to, I double check that. You know, uh, measure twice, cut once. I double check it. Light grey pieces on your cutting guide are project pieces, while the white pieces are leftover paper. Just so you know. As you cut the paper, label and sort the pieces as indicated in the cutting guide, creating a stack for each project. So, close to my heart suggests that you label your pieces. I personally don't do that. Shame on me. Um, but I do like to sort them because it makes it a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to do is there's a key there, um, tells you where to cut first, use the back of the paper. We're going to use this zip strip here, which is the one with the, they kind of look like ice creams on them. So we want one of these and we also want this one. I love this zip strip. It's so pretty. I've used it on something else. Um, I think I used it on my Twisted ribbon design. Okay, um, that's the wrong one, Charlotte. Yes, not that one. This one. This is the one I want. Okay, so the first one I'm cutting is this one here, and I need a three inch by half inch. So we know this is half an inch wide, and I'm going to cut a three inch piece. Then I need a two inch piece. Then I want a two in, another two inch piece. And then I want another two inch piece and I'll be left with this small piece here. So this will then go in a pile that's over there for, um, that's just sort of a scrap pile that I may or may not use for more pages or cards, or I may put it in the bin. Oh, yes, I do bin some papers. These have little numbers and letters underneath. So this is 1E. E. If you want, you can then just, I would use a pencil, label this 1E. E. It makes it easier to find it. Or you can just do as I do and don't label it. 
The other ones say P1, which means it goes into project one. So I'm just going to grab these three and these are all for project one. So 1E means that it goes with project one. I'm going to take these and I'm going to pop them into my first memory protector. So my first memory protector is for my project one. The second one is for project two and the third one is for project three. And if I muck them up, it doesn't, it's not pretty. Then I'm taking this zip strip and I'm doing two inches by half an inch and two inches by half an inch again. And these again are both for project one. Now, the great thing about having this printed off is that you can actually go and have a look and see project one. So I'll flip this over, project one and i can see zip strip so there's a zip strip and project one is also on the back of this page and there's probably a zip strip in there somewhere and then here is that um one of these zip strips the little ice cream zip strip down the bottom so that would be one e yes that's one e so we can go and check where pieces go just to check and make sure that we do have them in the right spot all right now that they are all cut we are then going to grab the next piece so we've got this exclusive paper which we're going to cut down to 10 inches by 10 inches i'm just going to have a quick look at that page so it's project three and it's 3a which means that it would be the first piece that gets put down which is this one here and yep, it looks like it goes 10 inches by 10 inches. And if I look on the other side, we're going to use a full piece for that side. So let's grab those two pieces and cut it down. So we've got two of these gorgeous pieces. And rather than having them side by side like that, again, I just want to have a quick look and see what they look like. So this one's got splotches on that side and the left hand page has splotches on the other side. So I'm going to spin it around and they're going to sit like that when they go together, like that. Again, I'm going to change something here. Rather than cutting two inches off out of the center to one inch and we've got the side one inch there we're going to bring it down to 11 so we're going to bring it all the way down to 11 and stop and this is one of the things another thing i love about this trimmer is being a v blade so this is not a rotary cutter it's got a v blade in it that's what i call it um, you can drop your blade down and get very accurate cuts so i'm just cutting that all the way back up to one inch Turn it again and cut again. You'll see I'm leaving the blade exactly where I stop it. And last cut, drop that down and that will have cut out. A 10 inch by 10 inch piece and it's left me this gorgeous border frame that I can then use on another project so this they are saying is a spare so I'm going to put that over that way this is for project three let's just grab so that's going to be one that's going to be two and that's going to be three I used to have cellophane bags and I had them numbered which was really really handy but I don't have them I have the memory protectors as I mentioned before that way I can put them straight into the album and work with them like that now just while I've got this other piece I'm going to have a quick look at this piece and <clears throat> I might deal with that a little bit later okay so I'm going to pop that aside because I probably won't use that as a background as they suggest. I'm going to cut that so that I've got some extra bits. And this is what I tend to do with my papers. 
The next piece that we're cutting is 3E, so it's going again for project 3, and we're cutting it out of this gorgeous ice cream paper. Down the bottom it tells us the ice cream's on the front and then the fruit is on the back. So there's your fruit. And this is where I like to double check. It's telling us the cut orientation is we're cutting down with the ice creams orientated so they're like this. Don't ask me what that is. And when we turn to project three, we can see it's going down this left-hand side of the page. And yes, we want them orientated like that. So that's correct. We're going to cut this at three and a half inches. One, two, three and a half. And you'll see we have so much left over of this particular paper. So there's three and a half inches. Now what that also does is it tells me that this is supposed to go on this page here like this. If I mount this onto white cardstock, so if I mount the whole lot onto white cardstock, I can actually take off, I could take off three and a half inches, but what I might do is take off three and a quarter inches and that gives me three and a quarter inches that I can use on, you guessed it, another project. So I'm not going to risk taking the full three and a half inches off just in case it's a bit wonky or I don't know, it doesn't line up. I'm just going to take three and a quarter. I could take three or three and a quarter. I'm going to take three and a quarter inches off and that I can now use on another project. So I'm popping that over there. These two pieces now can go into my project number three. So put them in there like that. And we've got that one cut. This is now, I mean, you couldn't call that scrapsy, but anyway, that will go in my scrap pile. Next, we've got another exclusive paper, and this one we're using on Project 1 and Project 3. So let's just have a quick look at Project 1. Project 1, we're doing it as a photo mat, and Project 3, Three, project three left page we're doing it as underneath that okay sweet so let's grab the exclusive paper and I mean we're using such a small amount of this gorgeous gingham is it gingham I think it's gingham okay um, and we're going to cut it at five by four and a half now this suggests that we cut it at five inches what I'm going to suggest to you though is if you cut it at four and a half, you'll have more 12 inch strip here um, and you'll still be able to get the five inches out of here. So I'm going to cut it at four and a half, not at five, and it's not directional at all, so that's all good. So I need four and a half inches. And what you might notice I'm doing is I always keep my paper at the bottom and then I start my blade at the top and I drag my blade down toward me. And that allows me, um, that means, hopefully, it's less likely for the paper to move. So if I had my paper at the bottom and my blade at the bottom and I pushed up, there's a chance that my paper could move. So I've cut that at four and a half, not five. Cut that at four and a half. I did cut it. Yes, I cut that at four and a half. This is now scrapsy, not scrapsy. I'm going to make some more pages out of this. Now I'm going to cut this to five inches. So let's cut that at five inches. And again, I'm just going to change that. This is for project one. So that's the top memory protector. Then I need a piece that is two inches by two inches. So for this one, different people do it different ways. Some people actually cut it out like that. Um, I tend to cut the full piece just because I do. There's no point me cutting two inches of this because it's just cutting into so much of it. So I'm going to turn it, cut two inches here. And then cut two inches here. So that is my piece for project three. And these, again, scrapsies. And just a reminder, these ones are specialty papers. So the back of them is white. Right, pop my instructions over there, pop this into number three. What a gorgeous piece of paper. All right, next we're going to cut into the cardstock. So the cardstock is actually up here, 
and we have flamingo. We need two sheets of flamingo because we're cutting two sheets of the flamingo. Again, with close to my heart papers, um, sorry, with close to my heart cardstock, they are double sided. As far as there's the one side which is the darker, it's the true colour, and then one side is lighter. But when we're looking at our cutting instructions, it will tell you that the flamingo cardstock we're cutting on the light side, and then the dark has got an asterisk, which means it's the back of the paper. This piece here is nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And just because my brain is not going to work very well, I'm just going to cut it down to nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. Um, but again, a tip for you. I, although you can extend this arm out, I tend not to because I'm lazy. <laughs> what, I, what I do is instead is just a little bit of math, kind of. I know this is 12 inches. So 12 inches, take away nine and a quarter is, no, math brain is off. So I go, this is six inches to cut there. That's then seven, eight, nine inches. So it's, this is now nine inches. And if I come across one more quarter, that will then give me nine and a quarter inches. So I need to cut it two and three quarters to get nine and a quarter. Did you work that out? Did you work that out? I didn't. But I'm going to remember that two and three quarters. This is scrapsy. Two and three quarters. I'm going to turn this around and cut it off at two and three quarters. Make sure that's nice and straight. And there is my nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. This piece is for project number two. So let's put it in there. And again, what you could do is, and that's actually the dark side. I need the light side. You could write on this 2D, which is the, the piece, um, write it on the dark side. Don't write it on the side that you're going to use. But I don't. I just put it in there like this. I don't know why. Probably because I'd only just seen that technique not that long ago. Now we have this piece, and I just wanted to check and see with any of the other cuts if we could get any of these cuts out of these pieces, which we can't. So these were two and three quarters, whereas these pieces are minimum three and a quarter. So that's going to go into the scrapsy pile. Okay, here's another tip when you're cutting. These look like they're going to be photo mats. They're three and a quarter by four and a quarter. The problem with cutting them at three and a quarter by four and a quarter is that at four and a quarters, you can only get two out of a 12 inch strip. However, if you cut them at three inches by four inches, you would get a lot more cuts out of, you'd get a lot more pieces out of that sheet. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm going to have a look at project three which I can flip back this way and just see so we've got two three by four photos a six by four photo and there should be a couple more yep and these couple here they should be easy enough to convert down to a smaller size so that's what I'm going to do and then all I need to do is trim my photo down a little bit um, I do need to be aware when I'm placing them on my page that I have trimmed them down smaller, but that should work fine. So I'm going to cut my cardstock here. I know where I am. I'm going to cut my cardstock slightly different. So here we have three and a quarter by four and a quarter, but I actually want four three by four inch pieces. We want the light side. So let's cut it on the right side this time, shall we? That's the light side. And if I cut my sheet at four inches rather than four and a quarter, so here we go, here's four inches. This is me being a little bit tight, okay? Sometimes, usually I cut it like this. Sometimes I will cut exactly to their directions, but usually I cut it like this. So there's my four inches. I've got all of this, so eight inches by 12 inches left. Then I'm going to turn this around and cut these into three inch photo mats so there's one and there's two and there's three and there's four so there are my three inch by four inch they are slightly smaller than what they said I had to cut 
but they are still going to work and when I come to put my photos on all I need to do is trim my photos down just a little bit. These are for project three as is the next one. So the next one I need is a four by six. I could make it four and a quarter by six and a quarter but I'm not going to. I'm going to cut it down as well. So for this one again I'm going to cut a four inch strip four inch strip and then I'm going to cut this down to six inches like so and I have these left over that I can make I can put um, more photos on the page I can use these as more photo mounts and these are really great too because if I wanted to say for instance use flip flaps I could use one of these inside a flip flap but for the moment I'm just going to pop these into layout three so I've got one two three pop these in and they really are lovely colors these and then these go on scrapsies the next color is sage i was wondering what that color was this is sage one of my favorite colors i think the reason i didn't identify it before was because i had it on the lights no i just didn't see it okay so, right so with these we have one f one b and one c when i come to constructing the layouts i'll explain what the letters are but these three pieces are for project one so let's have a quick look at project one and see where they go so one we've got this one here which is the four and a half by four and a half and these are these ones here okay so for these i will cut them as they request i'm not going to cut them down smaller i'll do them at what they say to do that so let's go four and a half that's the other thing i'll check are we using the dark side or the light side? We're using the dark side, so let's flip that over. So we're going to do four and a half inches, which is that one there. And then I'm going to cut these two pieces. So I want four and a half by six and a half. Now, this measures out to six and one quarter. So again, I'm going to bring it back to six and a half here. So that's six and a half. And then just to double check, I'm going to do this. Let's turn that over so you can see it properly. So this is the six and a half. So that's my piece that I want. And then this piece needs to be four and a half by four and a half. So let me take that up to four and a half. And this on my layout here is white. So this is a scrapsy. I have those two pieces cut I'm just going to pop them on top of that and then I need a three and a half inch by ten inch so let's put that right up to the top three and a half inches comes down there that's a scrapsy because we can see on there that's hopefully you can see on there I'm not looking at my camera that says that that let, let me just stand up and have a look yes you can oh that's good okay <laughs> That's white, so it's scrapsy, and this needs to come down to 10 inches. Again, I'm going to go 12, take away 10 is 2 inches, so I'm going to take 2 inches off my 12-inch strip. Hopefully that makes sense. I just I can't be bothered sticking my arm out. This is for Project 1. This is scrapsy. Those are my scrapsy pile. And these were all for Project 1. So we pop that into there. The other great thing about these workshop kits is there really isn't much cutting and usually it's pretty simple cutting I can see this one here is a little bit more complicated than some but usually it's pretty simple all right we've got another um, four and a quarter by three and a quarter inch cut to do so I'm going to have a look at project two and see if we can take that down to a smaller size so this is the four and a quarter by six and a quarter which is on that page probably could go down a little bit let's have a look at the other page so the other page 
Um, I think the spacing might be a little bit off if I take that down. So I might not cut these down. I might cut them as the, as is directed. And that's, I don't mind that actually because there are only, we only need three. It's not like we need a fourth. If we needed a fourth, I'd just say, no, I'm cutting it down to four by three, not four and a quarter by three and a quarter. So let's grab the Capri. And I love this color. I absolutely love this color. There we go. Capri. Again, we have a light side and a dark side. And with this one, it says that we're cutting on the light side. So let's go four and a quarter. The first measurement. So this says 2F, four and one quarter by three and one quarter. This first measurement is how far across you come. That little scissors there, hopefully you can see that that means that that's your first cut so we come across four and one quarter make sure that's nice and straight did i actually do that on the light side yes i did mm. such a gorgeous color that's four and one quarter and then we're going to cut three and one quarter so we're going to do one and two and three and this is probably where you would stop and then on the back if you wanted to you could write 2f 2g 2h again i don't sorry bad example i'm gonna pop them on top of that for the moment this one was a scrapsy we'll put that across to there this one then needs to be five and one quarter by seven and one quarter so let's go five and one quarter Make sure it's nice and straight by seven and one quarter. Now, I haven't cut this down yet, so I know that it is 12 inches. Math brain turned off. So we go six, seven and one quarter. Double check, seven and one quarter. Cut that off. And there is my seven and one quarter piece. These are all for project two. So we go project one. Project two. Now I could always put a sticky note or something on these as well. That would help me recognize if it's project one or project two. These two pieces are scrapsies and moving on to the white. A bit of a note about white cardstock. This will tend to cut through your, um, or sorry, blunten your cutting blade faster than any other cardstock. So you will notice your white cardstock burring or going furry first before any other cardstock so if you do notice that it doesn't mean that your blade is completely blunt you might still be able to cut your pattern paper or your colored cardstock um, and certainly don't throw your blades out okay your blades are great when it comes to cutting glitter paper if they're blunt that's i only ever use blunt blades on glitter paper all right, the first cut we're doing is three inches by 11 inches. So let's come down three inches and cut that one. And then we're doing, taking one inch off that. Here's another tip. When I'm cutting a one inch, something that's one inches, I find that if I put it on this side of the, the trimmer, it's a little bit awkward. We have a full one and a half inches out to this line here. So anything that is, normally I only go to one and a quarter inch, but if I have to take up to one and a quarter inch cut off something, especially a long piece like this, I tend to line it up with the one inch on the right hand side of the arm. And that way the rest of the paper is supported on this board and it just makes it a lot easier to support it and cut it. So we're taking one inch off that, like so. Again, I've done the hole. I'm not going to put it out to 11 inches and measure it. Yeah. That's a scrap. Put that over there. That is for project one. The next cut I do is for project two. So I'm actually going to put this one into my project one pocket first before I cut the next one. So the next cut is nine inches by nine inches. And this shows me already that I've cut three inches off. I've got nine inches left, so I just need to turn it around and trim that to nine inches. 
So I know that 12 take away 9 is 3. I'm going to cut 3 inches off this. Like so. This piece is scrap. And this piece goes into project 2. Then we enter scary territory, even for Charlotte. Especially going live. Thankfully, I do have some spare white cardstock. This is one of the reasons why it was just so great for Close to My Heart to show how to cut our papers because they covered all of this. All right, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. I'm going to just reach over the table and grab my Versamat because these things are brilliant. And what I want to do is... So with the Versamat, we have measurements all the way around the outside of the mat. And I know you can see that because I just stood up and had a look. If the word close to my heart is up the top, it means our zero, zero point is down the bottom here. I can see from this diagram, and I cheated because I looked before, what I need to do is cut from this point here up to here and this point up to here. This one is five and a half inches. This one is three and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is put my zero, zero point up the top right hand corner because then I can, if I can find my, where, no, no, right, no. what do I do with my white cardstock? How does that happen? How can I put something down? Because <laughs> I put things on top of it. Yes, yes. I can hear. I can hear you all laughing and yelling at me. All right. I'm going to stick this. No, I'm not. I'm just going to place this very square on my mat. Then I'm going to just read these again. So I want to come across from this corner. I'm coming across to five and a half. Check this out. So five and a half. And I'm just making a very small mark on there in pencil so I can erase it. Then I'm coming down three and a half inches. Now, if you don't have a Versa mat, that's okay. Buy one. No. Well, yes, but if you don't have a Versa mat, just use a ruler. Okay. I um I had a ruler. I think it's over there. No, I don't know where it is right at the moment. It's somewhere. Just use a ruler and measure and then mark. Okay, I have some very small pencil marks on my paper. And now, and this is where going live is dangerous, I'm going to see if my paper fits trying to cut those pieces, which it's not going to. Okay. So what you do need to do is you actually need a blade, a knife of some sort, and a big ruler to cut these, which, quite frankly, I don't have handy. <laughs> oh. Look, see, it's also good. Remember I said you, I don't read. Okay, tip. The long sides of 2A will not fit in a standard paper trimmer. You will need to cut this piece with scissors. Ah, pair the measurements provided with a pencil and ruler and lightly draw guidelines to cut along. Erase any leftover pencil marks after cutting. Could they have just done it? That's not simple. How is that? I'm going to have to find my ruler. I know that I had it in the last little while, as in, in the last, before I started the video. So, this is where I'd like to pause. Oh, look, I just found it. Ta -da! So I have this ruler. I'm not even sure if this ruler is going to fit. This ruler is 14 inches long, just for you, so that you know. Yeah, no, okay. So... 14, you, you need something longer than 14 inches, but you can make do. So I've got my mark there, and if you grab something like a zip strip, yeah, or better yet, grab a bit of cardstock because cardstock is firmer than pattern paper. I'm lining the edge of my ruler up with that, and then what I'm going to do is line up just down to that corner like this and I'm going to move my ruler down I don't know if this is going to work but hey I'm going to give it a go all right so it's going to go you know kind of something like that 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a look at the page because it's freaking me out, girls. It is freaking me out. All right. Attach the stickers, lay circles, attach flamingo. What? Use lemonade pattern paper for the base page. Cool. Um, attach the stickers and circle die cuts to 2A. So what, what I'm about to cut is 2A. So we're going to attach the stickers and circle die cuts to 2A as shown. Um, da 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 da. Da 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 da. Save piece of the right page. Attach 2A. So we're going to stick the stickers on before we do that. Then we're going to attach the flamingo and light flamingo die cuts. Attach 2B. Okay. So if I mess up, it's not necessarily going to matter because we have these pieces that I showed on the video earlier. So we've got these pieces here that are pre-cut and that'll give me a nice straight edge. Am I still nervous? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, let me just push that down and I think that's going to go fairly straight. So I'm just going to go a bit of a pencil line. I'd much prefer a really long ruler and like a rotary cutter. But I'm here, I'm live and I can't. So let's just bring that down to about there. Roughly there. Okay. And then this one. Oh, look. This one. This one you can use a 14-inch ruler and it works. Oh, that's good. I like it when something doesn't work and then it does work. Okay. Cool. There we go. And do you know what? It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to cut these apart now with my scissors. I'm glad I had my scissors handy. Use whatever scissors you want. I'm just using these. Are, these are close to my heart scissors. They do not look like the non-stick scissors because these are not the non-stick scissors. Um, these are just the micro tip scissors. Close to my heart have two different pairs of scissors that we sell. One, they're both micro tip, which just means that the end of the scissors are super, super fine. And when you cut all the way to the end, it doesn't rip the page. I don't know if you've ever noticed that with scissors. Um, but these ones are great for ribbons and paper and all that sort of thing. The other ones are the non-stick micro tip and they are really good for sticky stuff because they're covered in Teflon so nothing sticks to them. That was not as painful as I thought. Awesome. So that apparently is scrap. I believe. Where's my piece? Yes. Okay. That is scrap. And I could do something with that if I really had to. And then I'm going to cut this piece here. And I think when it comes to doing <laughs> layout number two, I might do some preparations before I actually um, do it live. You know, maybe it's going to freak me out as well. For those of you who are tuning in or watching and you don't know me, just a couple of things about me. I am a perfectionist and I have always said there is nothing wrong with being a perfectionist. If you had a perfectionist or a non-perfectionist and you had a brain tumour and the surgeons, there was one surgeon that was a perfectionist and the other surgeon wasn't, which one would you like to operate on you? Now, I, every day, would choose the perfectionist, but I'm not a brain surgeon. I am a paper crafter, so I need to just learn to let things go. Anyway, that turned out all right. Looks like a bit of a kite. This is for Project 2, and what I'm going to do is when I put it into my Project 2, where are you? 1, 2. When I put it in here, I'm going to make sure that I put it in this way down, so that I don't injure the sharp end. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. And then I'm going to slot. Oh, no, don't stick out. Please don't stick out. Let's just make sure that goes in all the way. 
There we go. Then I'm going to slide that between project one and two. And what are these? Are these? What is that? Was that a? <laughs> that was a scrap, and I didn't put it in the scrap pile. Okay, this was the top piece, and we need to do another funny cut. So I'm going to turn my mat back around, and I need. To cut this is going to go five inches here so same principle five inches here let's actually draw on the paper shall we show it and three and a half inches down here one two three and a half I can count and I only want the tiniest bit this one should fit in the trimmer so let's just move the mat so we're not crooked and we've got a mark there and a mark there again I love my trimmer because I can pop that into my trimmer line it up where the wire is and cut and there we have this is piece 2c and that is scrap I'm going to put my trimmer aside because if you look here, that's all the cutting I need to do. I'm going to put this into pack two, according to these instructions. Now, there may be some more cutting, just depends on what I decide to do. So what I said is I wanted to show you how to do all the cutting, but I also want to show you um, what I then do. So although I've done all the cutting, I've now got all this paper and everything everywhere. And what I want to do is put them put the pieces into the packs where they belong so just having a look at this this page here so project one left hand page it says use capri polka dot paper for the base page so let's find the capri polka dot so the capri polka dot is the back of my striped paper and i'm going to make sure it is actually directional if you look at the stripes they are directional I know these stripes are, but so are these. So I'm going to make them the right way. And we are going to put that into the back of this. Just because it's the biggest piece. And that's on an angle. It's the biggest piece. And that way everything else will be showing at the front. And will be easier to see. Okay. So we need that at the back of that one. But we also need some other bits and pieces. So what I usually do is I like to try and pack everything so I don't have rubbish. So I can take this and my adhesive and just stick it all down and there's no rubbish. However, with this, I'm not sure. <laughs> I might leave it in its little carrier. I know that this is for project two because I can see, hopefully you can see as well. Okay, it says attach prepared die cut strip, rectangle word stickers and project one zip strip accents as shown. Okay. Oh, here we go. Cut by cut strips into individual pieces. There you go. So there is more cutting. So what we're going to do is just pop these out. But to save on time, I can pop all of these out. That is not a problem. And I don't think they're in any particular order, are they? Well, they are. Oh, cool. Okay. So I'm actually going to leave them in the order that they are in so just having a look at this layout this first one we've got yellow and then we've got mint and then flamingo and then grape um, capri and then mint again and that is actually that strip there so I'm going to leave that as a whole piece so that when I come to put the piece to put the page together I can trim them and stick them straight down so let me just pull these apart, but uh, I do want to get rid of the rubbish 
so that I don't have a rubbish when it comes to putting the page together because it just makes it neater. And it also cuts down on time on the construction video. So I'm going to turn these over and again you'll see it's only printed on one side. One, two, three, and then this one probably doesn't actually follow on any of the other patterns but I'm still going to keep it as it is. Um, the other thing, the other reason I'm not cutting them apart is because it does say optional draw stitch lines on some die cut strips with a journaling pen as shown. And I think that might be easier to do if they're in a solid strip like this. So this one doesn't want to come apart. So if they're in a solid strip like that and I take my ruler and I draw little stitch lines it's just going to be a whole lot easier that's what that is okay and I'm just reading as I go as I'm pulling these apart um, so the other thing I'm not going to be putting I'm not going to be doing today is cutting apart the stickers to put in the pack that is something you can do if you want to and it's really simple to do I often do that and then I don't actually stick the stickers down which I'll show you in the construction videos just in case I decide that 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 sticker doesn't really go with that page or whatever all right so we're getting there these are all different sizes two and if they sometimes close to my heart will do a page like this and they'll actually run the strips underneath the photo not always but sometimes and if they do that I actually won't put the strips under the photos that way I can use them again on other pages as embellishments these are kind of fun as well but I'm learning that I really do have enough paper I do not need any more paper so I'm not going to keep these little strips. You certainly can if you want to, and they might even make just a fun background um, for a complete page. If you do do that, I suggest that you don't do what I'm doing and just rip through them all, but maybe get some scissors and go along and just trim the little um, joiny bits off, and that way it will look a bit neater rather than having broken bits. So, But these are coming apart quite nicely. And I'm nearly finished with this. And there we go. So then, oh, shock horror, I can just fold that up, stick it in the bin. And these go in here. The other thing with these patterns is you can print the pattern. So once you've downloaded it, you can actually print the pattern if you want to. And I've done that sometimes. I've printed the pattern off. And that way what I can do is just either in the front or the back, I can put that particular pattern. So I might even do that with this one where everything has been cut. And then if I take the staple off, and yes, I'm going to wreck my fingernails. So I'm just going to pull that apart. So this can now go into here like that and I know that that is for that page so that is project number one and tuck that under project number two and three and we have project number two coming up next so with this one it says use the lemonade pattern paper for the base page so the lemonade pattern paper is the sunny sunglasses pattern paper so that's this one and again what I'm going to do is just make sure that they're both oriented the same way so we've got that and that and I like to have a look and just see if there's any way I can cut the paper to save paper but I'm going to leave it as it is what I could have done instead of cutting the white cardstock is I could have had a go at cutting this shape out of this paper 
and just had the white underneath um, as a background. But that's okay. I cut the white and that is all good. So let's pop these again at the back. Like it so. And this is wanting me to use all of these gorgeous circles now I popped one out when I was doing the the walkthrough of the um, the pack which is that one there I thought I'd lost it for a second but I haven't which is good I'm just going to pop that in the back like that I could press all of those out but again I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to see the various circles if they're in their carrier sheet so that's that the other thing that goes with this particular page is these pieces but i know that this one does not so i'm going to grab this out of here actually i might just yep oh i'm going to pull these out as well the less rubbish I've got when I go to make these, the better it will be. And just having a look at the back of that, that is a gorgeous colour. What I could do is I could actually keep this and use it for stamping, embellishing, um, die cutting. And we've got that gorgeous uh, doily at the moment that would make a really, really nice doily shape as well I'm just going to turn these around so rather than throw this particular piece in the bin because it does have quite a good section up here I'm going to pop that in my scrappy pile and this is just going to be super fun when I go to figure out how it goes together but I have a feeling we're actually going to be using both of those sides of the paper, which is fun, very fun. All right. There we go. So this one's going to go in my scrappy pot. These are going to go at the front of this. And hopefully I can keep those points nice and sharp. So that is my layout two. Left page and whoops, right page. And I will pop that into there. And the final piece de resistance. This I love this paper. Probably because it's blue and I like blue. I don't know that's my excuse all right so for this piece it's saying to use the popsicle they call it the popsicle so the popsicle paper for a for base page now keep in mind that I did end up cutting these so I do need to grab a sheet of white cardstock to add to this what I could do if I wanted to keep to hold on to the popsicle Paper is I could actually cut the center and I might just do it just to show you the center out of this one rather than layering that onto there and then losing all of that paper I could cut the center out of that one so let's move that out of the way told you there might be more more cutting so just as a reminder I know that I cut one inch in from the corners to create sorry from the edges to create this one what i want to do for this one is just to give it enough of a border i'm actually going to come in i could come in just one and a quarter inch if i wanted to but i'm going to come in two inches so let me show you again two inches in now with this one because i'm going when i did the one inch i could just cut there not a problem but because I'm doing two inches and I can't measure two inches on this side of the arm, I'll be doing it on this side. So we go to the top. The reason I'm starting at the top 
where normally I do down the bottom, is because the measurement on the ruler starts at the top. And I want to make sure that I'm measuring two inches and I'll be coming down to 10 inches. It's getting late. Okay, so I'm coming down to 10 inches. Lift, rotate 45, line it up at 2 inches. Go from 10 back up to 2. From 2. Back down to 10. Now you might notice that when I'm doing this, I go quite quickly to start with and then I slow down when I'm coming to the end of the cut. That's because I know that I'm safe to cut all the way up there, but I need to slow down because I want to make sure that I don't overcut. Not that it's going to matter because this will have something over the top to cover it, but I don't want to overcut. So I now have this or this as spare. That goes in my scrapsy or spare pile. I am now finished with the trimmer. And you wouldn't even know, I can put some adhesive around the outside of this, turn it over and, as long as I've got it around the right way, stick this on and you won't even know that that is missing from the back. There you go. So I've got those two pieces. As I mentioned, I will need to put a sheet of white cardstock into there. Let me pop that in the front. This will then go in the back and I try and have it so that, you know, it's the right side showing out. Now, having said that too, you can always flip your papers. So if this side of the paper suits your photos better, just spin it around and use that. Last night on MasterChef, they had to do um, a different fruit salad. So they had to do a, I don't know, something with fruit salad. And, you know, I, I can't imagine them using this, but I could imagine if I was a master chef um, using this because it's just, it's different, you know. When do you come across purple citrus? So you can flip the papers over and make it what you want. All right, we also have these pieces here, which I'm going to punch out. And again, that will give me some less rubbish for when I'm constructing and these are just so cute goodness just so cute you can see that we've got journaling boxes and we've got just super cute so these are going to be placed in the center there and again if I really wanted to if I really like the paper I could send these through my die cutting machine and I could cut out um, the center if I wanted to I could be bothered but I don't and I can't I could even use this again as a background if I wanted to but I have so much that I really don't need so I'm not going to this we only need the this ring here and again during construction I will show you exactly why we need that ring but I'm going to take that off that's going to go with scrapsies that's going to go with the pile there. These are all going to go in the front. Just going to have a look at this. So we've got stickers. We've got those bits and pieces. That's all good. And we also need our um, shaker foam and acetate. So I've got that one there as well. And we will need these little shaker foamy bits, which can all go into this memory protector. I'll pop my instructions there, put these in here, put my little shaky bits in there, realise that that's going to be way too fat, so I'm going to take them out again. I don't mind that, but this might just bend my paper. So now I'm all ready. I have, that's my project three, project three.
project two and project one all ready to go to construct i've got my sticker sheet i've got these are just the cutting instructions which i don't actually need anymore and i've got that that can go into the album so there you go if i had the fourth uh, memory protector that would come in the pack with the memory protectors i could pop my sticker sheet and the instructions in that and then i could put the um, little shapes in as well well i hope that you have enjoyed watching this video um, i may well once i've constructed these six pages I may well take all of the leftovers, which were these pieces here, and create some more pages just to show you what you can do. So let's just bring this over. We've got quite a bit of leftover here to play with. Absolutely beautiful colours. And the more I play with this, the more I realise that it is just a gorgeous gorgeous paper pack i'm going to flip that over just so you can see the other side of that or maybe i'm not and we also have this because i cut it off and that so we'll see if i get time what i can create with that all right hello to rebecca you got me live you did just cutting the tutti frutti scrapbook layout sorry scrapbook workshop kit uh, i'm not sure how long that it, that took me but at the end of this video i'll be able to look back and see a little bit of fun nice chatting with everybody who ended up listening hopefully you've picked up some tips with this one if you do end up buying the kit feel free to just watch through and see what i've done to save some paper to be able to use on other pages i will be coming back to other videos and uh constructing those three layouts i'll be going live to do that so that you can see how they all come together let me know what you think thumbs up love heart it's now raining outside the sun has gone away so i might just do some more cleaning in my craft room all right thanks so much for watching stay safe keep crafting but bye for now